What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Let's get right into the stories, and it's official. Apple just announced that pre-orders for the new M2 MacBook Air will begin on Friday, July 8th at 5 a.m. Pacific time. That's 8 a.m. Eastern time. And they will start arriving for customers and be available in store one week later on Friday, July the 15th. And I've said a million times over that this is going to be the Mac of the year. And that Midnight Blue looks, oh, so good. The new M2 MacBook Air brings Apple's new second generation processor, a complete redesign with a larger 13.6 inch liquid retina display, a 1080p FaceTime camera. You got four speakers for an improved sound system and up to 18 hours of battery life with MagSafe charging and it starts at $1199. So we're all looking forward to this now that its release date is official and I can't wait. All right, let's get to the other big stories. The new Apple Watch could be getting a larger display. Now we're still waiting to see that flat edge flat body design that was leaked out before the Series 7 came out, but you know what never happened? Well, the latest report from display analyst Ross Young says Apple is working on a Series 8 with a larger display. Now, last October, Young first suggested that the Apple Watch Series 8 could come in three display sizes, and now he says a new additional display size to the Apple Watch family will be a 1.99 inch display diagonally. Now, the current 41 millimeter Apple Watch face is 1.691 inches diagonally. The current 45 millimeter watch face is 1.901 inches diagonally. And this new 1.99 inch display would be 5% larger from the Series 7. It's also possible the slightly larger display would be specific to the new rumored Apple Watch redesign that we saw from John Prosser. You know that reports are lining up that we should see this rugged design Apple Watch model that will join the Apple Watch Series 8 lineup this year. And this third larger display model could be the new rugged Explorer edition with the flat edge design that we've been waiting for. Now there's also been a lot of back and forth about what new health sensors we may or may not see in this year's Apple Watch, but a recent report from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman now says it will feature a body temperature sensor for both the Series 8 and the new rugged edition watch. It will still need to pass internal tests, but it will help give you an idea of what is going on with your body, similar to how the body oxygen sensor gives you suggestions. Now, this new temperature sensor could detect a spike in body temperature for a fever, and then maybe suggest you visit a doctor or check with a thermometer, but it won't necessarily provide the actual reading. But come on, guys and gals, like, here's how I check for a fever. I feel good. But it could look for shifts in temperature that could also assist with tracking fertility and other health metrics while maybe exercising or being active as well. Now the Apple Watch Series 8 is still expected to use the same S6 chip that was in the Series 6 Apple Watch, and it would make it the first Apple Watch to have the same processor for three years in a row. There's also been talk that there could be updated displays in the higher end models, which might bring an even brighter display. And you know me, like I still love the Apple Watch. This is my day one, but still the number one thing that we want is more battery life. And that honestly won't likely happen until we get a new, more efficient processor. So we're waiting on that. Now we've heard rumors that the new AirPods Pro might also bring new health sensors for heart rate or body temperature. German squashes that idea and says neither of those two features will be coming to the second generation AirPods Pro. He says the features have been explored internally, but they're unlikely to launch with this year's 2022 model. And we continue to say that this is going to be one of Apple's biggest product years. And in case you're still on team iMac Pro, you're going to have to wait. The latest Bloomberg report says Apple is working on at least two iMac models that will likely use the new M3 series of the chip that has yet to be announced, right? We're only at M2 right now, but Apple will likely launch an updated 24 inch model with a standard M3 chip in 2023. And it's continuing their work on the higher end pro model that a lot of you are holding out for that could come equipped with either an M3 Pro and M3 Max processor options. Now, if you're wondering about, hey, what about at least an updated M2 iMac for this year? It's not even on everyone's roadmap. so. Maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. All right, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Avast. Avast is a global leader in cybersecurity for more than 30 years and trusted by over 435 million users and prevents over 1.5 billion attacks every month. Avast empowers you with digital safety and privacy, no matter who you are, where you are, or how you connect. Enjoy the opportunities that come with being connected on your terms. Avast's new all-in-one solution, Avast One, helps you take control of your safety and privacy online through a range of features. And you can learn more about Avast One at avast.com. 
Because Avast believes essential protection should be available to everyone, a free version of Avast One still includes award-winning free antivirus, free VPN, free firewall, and much, much more. Avast privacy features keep your identity and actions hidden, its security solutions stop malware, phishing, and virus attacks, and Avast performance products clean up and speed up your devices. It includes its award-winning antivirus that stops viruses and malware from harming your devices, and firewall protection keeps personal information secure and prevents attacks that seek to access our computers and steal our data. I also like how getting set up is easy, and all I did was just download the app and one click for the scan, and Avast One took care of the rest for me. So thanks again to Avast for supporting my channel. Confidently take control of your online world with Avast One. It helps you stay safe from viruses, phishing, attacks, ransomware, hacking attempts, and other cyber crimes. Learn more about Avast One at avast.com. Okay, let's get back to the stories. And if you saw my video review back in the day, like I destroyed the AirPods Max smart case, carrying case, like this thing, I absolutely destroyed it in my video. Is it like a pair of booty shorts? Is it a smart bra? It's a purse. I, it's, it's, look at this thing a case come on now it's still the worst case for a pair of headphones what over 200 250 dollars that i have ever seen but that could change because a new patent has been granted for apple for a new version of the airpods max smart case the illustrations here make it look more similar to a clamshell design with an opening to the interior and a magnetic closure or clasp that's formed around the opening wow so uh you're telling me apple you realize that you should have made a case that actually protects your $549 headphones entirely. That's a bad apple. Boo! Another image shows the case and how it could be a magnetic ring that goes along the entire edge of the opening as well. And based on these rough concepts, the AirPods Max go from looking like a purse to actually being in a purse. But it is better than that first smart case, like without a doubt. Apple also recently won a patent for their dual monitor stand that was first revealed in 2020. Now I remember seeing this back then and it would be based on the pro stand design for the current studio display and the pro display XDR. The patent is titled dual display stand and has an easy and precise adjustment system for up to two displays. Now this stand is spaced out and connected by a horizontal bar where you'd mount the displays on them. And then there's this movable joint in the middle to allow the center to pivot. It will also have precise vertical and horizontal adjustment. Well, this patent emphasizes that this design provides smooth and consistent contact for adjustments. So if the adjustable stand for the Pro Display XDR was an additional $999, and that got a lot of people fired up who were not gonna buy one anyways, let's be real. We have to be talking, what, at least $1999 for this setup, like when you look at it, right? I mean, this thing is a professional's wet dream and it is such a detailed patent that I wouldn't be surprised if we saw this arrive in the near future. And it's not like I could really even take advantage of it because you actually need two displays to use it. But hey, I can always dream. Now, Apple just released a new firmware update for the Siri remote for the Apple TV. That's the silver remote that they released in May of last year that works with the Apple TV and Apple TV 4K. The software update will be installed automatically over the air, but there are no specifics on what it fixes other than the normal minor bug fixes and performance improvements. But if it lets me scroll constantly around the entire circle to advance through a video instead of just like the top half with some apps, then that alone is a nice update for me. And also, before we end this, you know, I wanted to end it with a fun story. I know it's a little older, but hey, I was out last week and I don't care because I still had to share this with you. Captain America is finally upgrading his iPhone. That's right, actor Chris Evans has finally said goodbye to his iPhone 6S. What? That dude was still rocking the 6S as one of the biggest movie stars today. And maybe Marvel just needs to pony up and pay him better, but on an Instagram post, he said, RIP iPhone 6S. He added he will miss its home button, like many people still do, but he wrote, I won't miss the nightly battle of trying to get you to charge or your grainy pictures or your sudden drops from 100% battery to 15% to completely dead all within minutes. Are you kidding me? The iPhone 6S was released on September 25th, 2015, and he's had it since then. I mean, it looks like he's upgrading to a 13, which is a good call, but maybe he took that signature line, I could do this all day a little too seriously with his iPhone. I can do this all day. Yeah, I know, I know. Also, if he stuck with an iPhone SE, that would have been very on brand of him, but he didn't. So 
Welcome to the future, Chris, because your iPhone now takes incredible photos and has a killer battery life. Because, you know, Cap was frozen in ice for, what, 70 years? Well, Chris kept his phone for seven years, which also feels like 70 years in the tech world. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for this video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell, ding, to get all my latest videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week with special guests. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace and love.